Gosh, it's beautiful out here. Do you take time sometimes to stop and look around and realize, gosh, this is nice. It's beautiful. <laughs> Did you know that God wants you to stop sometimes, whatever it is you're doing, and just look around? We live in a society that sometimes removes us far away from the everyday reality of hands in dirt. <laughs> uh, Plants growing, animals living. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're living in a state like Alaska or some other place that you deal with it every day, well, you know what I'm saying. But for a lot of people, they live in cities and they're on the Internet or they're dealing so much so with everything about them, of their circumstances, that they're, they're consumed with right here, seeing only what's right in front of their face, rather than what's all around them. Even clouds in the sky on a beautifully blue background with effervescent greens just picturing the trees and causing them to be stepped forward from what they are sitting in and the reality of these flowers and how they too stand out reflecting God's creation and you know what you might not know all of creation groans waiting for you to get your act together yep. you and me because it says that creation groans and travail for the revelation of the sons of God. In other words, all that God created, being under a curse, is waiting to have the curse removed. And for us to be in our rightful place, so that there may be more to what you see around you than you realize. There might be something to Dr. Doolin was talking to the animals then you might know about and who knows maybe the trees will clap their hands and the mountains shout with joy and the rocks cry don't be surprised I wouldn't be there was silence and I heard a still voice Job 4.16 a score of years ago a friend placed in my hand a book called True Peace it was an old medieval message, and it had but one thought, that God was waiting in the depths of my being to talk to me if I could only get still enough to hear his voice. I thought this would be a very easy matter, and so began to get still. But I had no sooner commenced than a perfect pandemonium of voices reached my ears, a cacophony of sound, people talking all around thousand clamoring notes from without and within until I could hear nothing but their noise and din. Some were my own voices, my own questions, my own thoughts. Some were my prayers. Some were my concerns, my worries, my frets, my anxieties. Others were suggestions from the tempter and the voices from the world's turmoil. Even the very quietest of sounds began to attract me as slowly I began to question what each one was and what that noise might be but I was not still. In every direction I was pulled and pushed and greeted with noisy acclamations and unspeakable unrest. It seemed necessary for me to listen to some of them and to answer some of them. The phone ringing, the cell phone buzzing, the texting, beeping. But God said to me, be still and know that I am God. Then came the conflict of thoughts for tomorrow and the things I needed to worry about, the things I needed to be concerned. But God said, be still. And as I listened and slowly learned to obey and shut my ears to every sound that was all around me, 
I found after a while that when the other voices ceased, or I ceased to listen to them, or to hear them, there was a still small voice in the depths of my being that began to speak with inexpressible tenderness, gentleness, a power, a comforting tone, something that welled up within my soul and spoke to me. As I listened, it became to me the voice of prayer, the voice of wisdom, the voice of duty. And I did not need to think so hard or pray so hard or trust so hard, but that still small voice of the Holy Spirit in my heart was God's prayer to my secret soul. It was God's answer to my, all my questions. It was God's life and strength for soul and for my body. And it became substance to all knowledge and all prayer and all blessing. For it was the living God himself as my life, inside of my life, in me. And he became my all. It is thus that our spirits drink in the life of our risen Lord. And we go forth to life's conflicts and duties like a flower that has drunk in the waters. And through the shades of night, the cool and crystal drops of dew. But as dew never falls on a stormy night, so the dew of this grace never comes to the restless soul. Be still and know I am God. You know, part of what we do in devotional devotions is that I made the bold and adamant challenge that you should hear God's voice. I made it a priority to say that I needed to read these. But I also stated, I have heard God speak. I have heard him audibly speak to me personally. And that can be for you too. I do hear God in the very quietness of my heart speak to me and in my soul at times when I really need to hear him. I have also <laughs> laid in my bathtub with the water running when all the other noises are drowned out and listened as God spoke to me and just comforted me with words of encouragement at times when I may have been discouraged. I've heard God speak to me in the written word when it just seemed so awesome and so poignant and perfect that it just came to me and it was like standing out as though it were in 20 or 30 or 60 print size and all the rest was in 10. I have heard God speak in the whispering of the breeze when suddenly in a moment of time as I'm sharing something or I'm caring or I'm being there and I'm waiting for the Lord suddenly this breeze comes by and I can hear him on the breeze and that should be for you because there's no reason why you can't hear God speak there is absolutely no reason you can't hear God speak Jesus himself said my sheep hear my voice are you a sheep if you are then he didn't say you should hear his voice. If you are, he didn't say that you could hear his voice. Jesus himself, the Son of God, the Son of Man, made a very bold and state, straightforward decree that I believe, and that's why these devotionals exist. He said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. Do you know Jesus? Do you hear his voice? Will you follow the voice of another? That's the point. Now, there's going to be pastors and teachers and elders and deacons and weepers and reachers and everyone else and everything else and everyone else and all that there is else to try to warn you and be careful and be, you know, don't don't get too carried away and don't, don't get too far to the left or too far to the right and remember that, you know, you don't want to do anything that's contrary to what you read in this site and what's in the Word, you know, and all these other things. But let's get real. Can't God handle it? I mean, can't God handle you? I think so. I think that's why I am here, why you are there, and why we are doing devotionals. Because God wants you to know you were right when you were a little child. When you set your first prayer kneeling beside your bed and you prayed to God as Abba Father, as Daddy, and you expected that He heard your voice, He did. But when you grew up, you began to doubt because you were told that, you know, you got to read the Word. you got to do this. you got to, got to, got to. Until one day, you just lost track of what Jesus said. And you know, that's okay. 
because you have a mind now that can't be deceived. But where's your heart at? Do you still love the Father intimately and deeply? Do you have that fellowship with Him as He wants you to have? Can you hear His voice crying out to you from your inner soul inside you that says, Be still and know that I am God? Can you hear God's voice? Can you? He wants you to. He wants you to. You should hear God speak. No other reason except for He is God and you are His. And when you hear God speak, you're going to find out something very interesting about the Lord God Almighty who made you, who created you, and who gave His Son for you. You're going to find out your Father loves you. Thank <laughs> you.